The first question we need to answer is what are base units and why do we need them? Well, let me illustrate that with an example. Uh, let's take length. So if I write down here on the side, just length, we can think of many different ways to, uh, to measure length. For instance, you have the meter, which is a standard unit of measurement as we're about to see. But you can also have a centimeter. So if something is a little bit smaller, you tend to measure it in centimeters. Uh, you have a kilometer. For example, the distance between Manchester and London is about, uh, about 300 kilometers, I believe. So on a slightly larger scale, you can also have the mile, like so. Um, on a higher scale, you can also have um, something like a light year, which is the distance the, the light will travel in uh, 365 days, etc., etc. There are many different measurements for the same quantity. Now, what's special about base units and base quantities is that they cannot be expressed in terms of each other. They are fundamental. You can kind of think of them as the uh, Lego building blocks, the fundamental bits of all the units. And here are those units. For mass, the base unit is a kilogram. For length, the base unit is a meter. For time, it's the second. Current, it's the amp. For temperature, it's the Kelvin. Notice that it's not degrees Celsius. And so particularly in the second year of physics, we're going to be looking at the uh, Kelvin scale in a little bit more detail. And finally, for the amount of substance, we have the mole. So these are fundamental units. They cannot be expressed in terms of each other. Uh, one thing to watch out for is that the kilogram is the only base unit that has a prefix. So um, I'm just going to highlight it over here because the base unit is the kilogram. It is not the gram. Okay, well, now, if something is not a base unit, it can be derived in terms of those base units, and hence it's a derived unit. Let me give you a couple of examples. So let's start off with a couple of simple ones. The trick is to always think what the formula for that quantity is, and then try to think about the derived unit from there. So let's have a look at speed. As we know, the formula for speed is V is equal to S of T, where V is the speed, S is the distance traveled, and uh, T is the time. Important to know that, of course, this is the formula for average speed only. Well, the derived unit in this case is going to be meters divided by seconds or meters per second. And that's because the unit of S is M and the unit of T or time is just S. So hence the derived unit is meters per second. Now because of the properties of powers, this can also be written as ms to a power of minus one. If you're unsure of this, uh, just remember from your GCSEs that s to the power of minus one is just equal to one over s. And this is true in general in, uh, in mathematics. Okay, well, the next example, momentum, uh, p is equal to m times v, which is mass times velocity. The, um, the base unit for mass is the kilogram and velocity we've already seen just up here that the unit for that is meters per second so 
m s to the power of minus one. So the derived unit for momentum is actually kilograms m s to the power of minus one. Okay, perfect. You're getting the idea, hopefully. Um, let's do one more before we move on to some past paper questions. Let's have a look at the one for density. Uh, density is um, is mass per unit volume or mass divided by volume. So let's apply the same procedure. Mass is measured in kilograms. Volume, I'm sure you remember from GCSE physics and mass, is measured in cubic meters. So the base uh, derived base unit or the derived unit in terms of base units for density is going to be kilograms divided by meters cubed, which we can also write as kg m to the power of minus 3. Perfect. So these were some relatively simple examples to get us started with this. Now let's have a look at some OCR past paper questions. As always, if you want to do uh, some more past paper questions, I've provided some links into where to get them from and um, together with some uh, mark schemes. But let's have a look at those multiple choice questions to begin with. The first one here is saying which of the following units is not an SI base unit? Okay, so that's... Uh, um, seems okay so far. All we need to do is go through that list of units and see which one is not in essentially that table that we looked at in the um, in the very beginning. So going back to this, uh, we know that the the amp or the ampere is is in there. So that is a base unit. We know that the more is a base unit, but aha. Uh -huh, it is the volt. So that is was not in the table up there. So in this case, the correct answer is C, the volt. And that will be one mark in a multiple choice question exam. Okay, next one. Which electrical quantity has the SI unit amp seconds or AS? Charge, current, resistance potential difference as always the best thing to do would be to write some formulas besides uh, those quantities so for the first one we know that the formula for charge is q is equal to i times t well actually in this case we are relatively lucky because the very first answer is the correct one and we know that because um um, the formula for charge is current times time. Current is measured in amps and time is measured in seconds. So the base unit for charge, the, the Coulomb, is actually um, amps seconds. So in this case, the correct answer is A. So we can write that in there. Okay, next one. So now it's going to get a little bit more tricky. What are the correct base units for either work done or energy? And this is a useful one to actually keep in mind or be able to derive incredibly quickly because it come it keeps coming up again and again in exam in exam situations. So the first thing to do is I would write a formula for one of those things, either work done or energy. I'm going to do uh, work done in this case. So let's say that work done is force multiplied by distance. I know that uh, force is mass times acceleration. So MA times the distance. And um, now I can actually um, start applying some units 
to this. So we know that the mass is measured in kilograms. The unit of acceleration, if you remember from your GCSEs, is meters per second squared. And the unit for distance is simply meters. So that means that the base unit for work done is going to be kilograms times meters divided by s to the power of 2 times meter again, which means that it's going to be kilograms m squared divided by s to the power of 2. And we can just write that as kilograms meter squared s to the power of minus 2. So we see that the correct answer is D. Once again, it's really worth just uh, perhaps either remembering this or just uh, practicing this derivation uh, quite often because uh, it's one which is very, very useful. Let me show you how this is useful because it can be used in... Um, other questions quite a lot. Um, I've got another past paper question here. This one is from the 2018 Exploring Physics OCR paper and it's a two mark question and it's asking us to derive the, the SI base units for resistance. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing to do as always is just to write down a formula. So we know that resistance is voltage uh, divided by current V over I. Once again, it's a formula given in your formula booklet. As well on the side, um, maybe just over here, I'm just going to write another formula which is very, very useful for, um, uh, for base units and for many other calculations that voltage is electrical work done per unit charge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this formula, I'm going to sub that in this equation over here, and we're going to get that resistance is work done divided by charge Q times the current I. Well, let's repeat the same process, but now we also can remember that Q is actually equal to IT. So we can write that down. So it's going to equal to W over I times T multiplied by I. So that's going to equal W over I squared multiplied by T. Perfect. Well, luckily for us, we've just derived the base units for work done. So they were just over here, kilograms, M to the power of two, S to the power of minus two. So we can just write the base units at the top. So that's gonna be kilograms, m squared s to the power of minus 2 and we're going to need to divide that by the base unit for current which is uh, the amp so it's amp squared multiplied by seconds okay so i'm almost there i just need to do a little bit of tidying up so that's going to equal kilograms meters squared I'm going to bring that a to the top, a to the power of minus 2. The power has flipped now that um, the amp has gone um, to the top bit of the fraction. And um, if I divide s to the power of minus 2, if I divide by another unit of time, I'm actually going to get s to the power of minus 3 which is my final answer and I can write this over here so it's kilograms meter squared e to the power of minus 2 
s to the power of minus 3. And we can see how those units, those base units, are the building blocks of all the other units. So resistance can be expressed as kilograms, meter squared, a to the power of minus 2, s to the power of minus 3. Excellent! Hopefully you have enjoyed this video and as always you can put a comment down below if you've not quite understand uh, something or if you'd like me to go over um, a different topic. Thank you very much for watching.